Welcome back to the YT1300 mod, where we'll be going through putting all of the LEDs in the ship today, starting with the 1mm up front. After dabbing the LED in some flux and tinning both it and the wire, I find it easiest to use the pin and go in from the side and just tap it into place. For the second wire, I like to grab the LED by the first wire in the clamp. I find this gives me w more room to operate, and often I will go back and redo the first wire. As you can see, the black is much better connected than the red. After redoing the first joint, I am good to go ahead and test it to make sure that I have continuity throughout the entire LED. Using a standard battery makes it super simple to make sure it turns on. Now we'll start installing all of the LEDs inside of the ship. As you know, we have the two blue LEDs for the engine, the two white LEDs for the headlights, and the YT1300 already has the fifth LED already installed for the fiber optics. The two white ones will go up front, like so, and then the two black ones will go, or blue ones will go in the back to provide light for the engines. Doing an approximate layout will help me judge how long the wire should be. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the front lights for the headlights. If you notice, I did have to change to a smaller gauge wire in order to get the wires to fit through the ship. I'm just going to use some green stuff to hold it in position. After I test fit it with uh, by hand and with the pliers, and then route the wires underneath the fiber optics. This is to make sure that as I am working on the system, I don't pull the fiber optics out of place and cause them to be damaged. It's useful to once you start threading them through, to just use your pliers or tweezers to pull them the rest of the way. And just for testing purposes, I like to separate the two, putting the positive on what will be the right side of the ship. Now it's all ready to test fit with the top half and make sure it fits well. And with the two halves of the hull pushed together, we can make sure that the, the LED is in place prior to just securing it with green stuff. Now I've placed it in place with green stuff, closed the ship, and lit it up to make sure that everything looks good. Here is a shot of the ship with both sides done. I have the green stuff secured inside and just test fitting everything. With the front of the ship complete, we'll turn our attention to the engine. In order to cover up the 2 inch scap of the engine, I will be using milk carton diffuser, which I will cut out to size and glue in place. First, I'm going to measure how thick it needs to be by using a pair of calipers. Once I have the measurement taken from the ship, I will use the calipers to align the ruler to make sure I get a good width. I will then lightly use the hobby knife to score the plastic, and then I will continue to use the hobby knife to cut it gently. By doing this in multiple strikes, you make sure that you end up with a smooth cut, and you don't end up moving the plastic or the ruler, getting you a jagged edge. And with the piece cut off, I will then test the thickness to make sure I am very close to where I need to be. Now that I'm satisfied with the thickness of the piece of plastic, I'll take a few measurements here to eyeball how long it needs to be. I will then use my hobby knife to just make a mark, and then I will line up my blade with that mark and make a perpendicular cut. One more test fit before I glue it in place. 
I'm just using super glue here to fill that groove with glue. And then I will place the diffuser on top of that to maintain the curvature of the ship. And now that the diffuser is in place, I will test fit it to make sure everything looks good. I'm satisfied with the results here. It seems like there's only very small gaps, if any, along the entire edge. Last up, we have to start putting all of the electronics inside of the ship itself. I've already soldered on the first resistor to the battery itself, and now I'm going to be soldering on the first blue LED for the engine. I will be using both my hands to steady the ship and hold the LED in place, with the other hand holding the soldering pin. This is one of the more tricky operations, as you have to align numerous things all at once, and you have very little room to navigate throughout. As you continue to solder more wires, it becomes more complicated. Continuing on, I've now soldered both LEDs for the engine in place, and I will be now attaching the resistor for the white LEDs. This will be the fourth wire at this joint, making it extremely difficult to get all four to stay together. I will end up using a combination of angles from the tweezers, in order to get a good joint on all four wires. Oftentimes, one, when you get one in place, another will like to come out of place, so it can be very difficult to manage this. And now we're moving on to the negative side of all five LEDs. As you can see, I've actually kind of twisted some of them around others, hoping to make it easier to provide a group area and keep them all together, but not all of them are cooperating and I need to use the tweezers to hold them in place as I apply solder to the uh, larger joint. These will all go onto the magnetic reed. And finally, we'll test out all of the soldering joints that we've made thus far. As you can see, upstream of the mag magnetic reed, when I touch the leads, it turns on, downstream it does not, until I place a magnet on the switch itself. Everything appears to be working as intended, so please tune in the next time for the conclusion of the YT-1300.